Right. Okay. So, right. Um, who doesn't know me? Up yours. Okay. Right. So, I'm. This is more like designed to be a discussion round, and because I'm actually not sure how to go about this problem myself. So, the problem here is that I want to virtualize NVMe. As you might or might not know, NVMe is a nice protocol, a storage protocol, which is designed to be the um, this 6R, which is destined or supposedly destined to be the successor of the SCSI protocol. Well, that's the aim there, right? At this time, it is a competing protocol and it's just trying to find its feet. So, so to speak. Um, so, it is a nice protocol and highly parallelized and everything, but eventually we want to have this, the protocol and or the drivers also in a, in a virtual guest. So while there is a normal, um, well, there is already a, there's a, a virtualization already available, meaning, or not rather virtualization, an emulation available. This is a complete emulation, so basically it does the entire thing from scratch. And it's not really a virtualization as such. So the thing is, before I go into that, um, there's some crucial things to, uh, to mention. The one is that there's NVMe and that there's NVMe over fabrics. NVMe is the local ones, which you have in any modern laptop, which is basically a PCI interface, and um, defines the entire device on a PCI level. So the entire spec is defined in the PCI level, and everything is geared around that. So this is roughly compatible to the HCI spec, uh, like you have on SATA. And actually, that was, anyway, the original name of it was NVMe HCI, but it doesn't matter. So, um, but eventually, people came to realize that the NVMe protocol itself might be worthwhile having on a global level and that it might be a usable protocol even for general storage, uh, stor uh, uh, well, for general storage transfer. So there, uh, an extension was created called NVMe over fabrics, which is um, just the the original NV, uh, the orig origin NVMe spec minus the PCI bits, and abstracted thing uh, abstracted away so that you can run it across different transports, which are in the at uh, this time um, RDMA, fiber channel, uh, and TCP. So, and the task now is this NVMe of fabrics is. Um, obviously a normal driver, like a normal, something went on with the mic here. Is it me or someone else? Because I think, it, yeah, so is, is it not better now? I don't know. So it, is, it, is it okay with the mic? Yeah. Right, okay, good, fine, so it's just me. So, and NVMe more fabrics is nice and everything, and can be deployed on large installations. I have a NetApp nowadays, which can talk NVMe over fabrics, and um, well, several net NetApps actually. So this is the protocol you want to use, or which it will be used for larger deployments or for storage array or and enterpri enterprise class systems. Now the challenge here is, how do I get these devices presented by NVMe over fabrics into a virtual guest? So, this is how a QMIO flow, flow looks nowadays. Ah, that's my, okay. So, we have the hardware here, a device driver talking to the hardware, g getting, uh, going into the kernel space, the QMIO, uh, the QMIO program itself, which has a device emulation, which talks via the QMIO abstraction with the device driver of the guest kernel, and then the device driver talks again with the user space, uh, with the normal user space process originating the I.O. So, and transporting this just for the normal, for a NVMe 
device or an FME or a Fabrics device would look like this. So again, you have the hardware here, and then you have the NVMe or Fabrics device, which in fact is not one but two drivers. So there's the normal hardware driver, typically a SCSI driver or an NVMe driver, which has a front end for NVMe or Fabrics. So these are in fact two drivers here, but then you have the same emulation, goes into QEMU, which does the block emulation. This then goes into the NVMe, into the NVMe driver in the guest kernel, which then talks to the user space. There are a few things to note here. The one is that you have a double pro a protocol translation, because you first need to, uh, need to transform the NVMe protocol here into a block protocol. And then you need to convert this block protocol back into an NVMe on, on this side here. And also, you have several context switches here. So you have a, con a context switch here from the host kernel into the QMA block emulation, then another one from the QMA block emulation into the kernel again, um, into, into the guest kernel, and another one from the guest kernel into guest user space. So quite a, lo uh, quite a lot of con context switches involved, which obviously also cost time. So, and now the problem is, how do I virtualize this whole thing efficiently? Of course, I could just go with that, but that not really is not really virtualized. This is a complete emulation. So it doesn't really matter whether this is NVMe or not NVMe. It could be anything, really, because it would be abstracted away by the block emulation. Yes? Do <laughs> thing. So just more uh, uh, information maybe here. So you're talking about virtualizing a namespace or yes. the entire device? Because there's still a possibility of direct attaching your PCI device. You're coming to this. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I have okay. more than one slide. But at this level, we're talking namespace virtualization, right? At this level, it would be namespaces, yes. Okay. So, the naive thing would be a native NVMe emulation. So, just emulate the LLD driver in QEMU, and then you have the LLD driver here in the guest, and you can run it here. Just do this. Only this in LED, and that is a horrible complex beast. It's not something you'd e emulate likely. I mean, we are speaking of drivers which consist of literally 100,000 of lines of code. And no, you might want to do lots of things, but emulating this one is probably not something you would like to at attempt. So while the approach is very, is very simple, the implementation is far from it. So. The other possibility would be using NVMe over TCP, because that is just a TCP protocol, and as such, you could just use normal network drivers. So you wouldn't need to modify anything in the QEMU stack, that it would just work at this, and the NVMe over TCP driver here would also work. And, so, and this actually works even nowadays, even with um, SP1. So we um, put everything in there that you could do it with SP1. Problem, of course, is that it will be NVMe over TCP. So it wouldn't help you at all if you have a nice NetApp array if it doesn't speak to NVMe over TCP. And rest assured, it doesn't. So yes, it does virtualize after a fashion. Well, actually, it doesn't virtualize. It just makes an NVMe uh, pass through. But it doesn't really solve the general case. Also not so quite what one was looking for. So the other thing is there's something called MDEF in QEMU, called uh, for short for me a mediated device, which is well some sort of slimline drivers on top on top of others, which you could use, uh, which you, uh, which <laughs> might help the case here. So what they actually do is they have they do an emulation of the protocol and then a slimline driver only interpreti uh, interpreting parts of the whole thing. So that's what they're using for, um, for GPIO pass-through. If Liang is here, he would know. Um, ah, there he is. So basically, that's what they're using, using for um, GPIO pass-through. But then this also needs some hardware interaction, because in the end, you still have to talk to the hardware down here, or to the driver down here. So it still needs some sort of hardware <coughs> interaction. 
And well, at this time, obviously there's none. Yes. Why do you emulate NVMe OF driver in, uh, in QMU here? Your OF driver is going to give you an NVMe target, so you can just have MDEV on top of that and have a simple NVMe emulation in QMU, or driver in QMU. Well, but if you go for the NVMe target thing, then... Or are you trying to emulate a host here in QMU or something like that? So, no, what I'm trying to do here is, uh, no, is have an efficient emula emulation. What, I'm <sighs> what I really hate is to have this uh, protocol thing that have to transform the protocols. Because as soon as I have to transform the protocols, I can as well stay here. There is no, no big difference, really, whether I try to transform from protocol A to protocol B or from protocol A to protocol C. It doesn't really matter, really. So the point is, is it possible to have an efficient one that I do not have to have a protocol translation? So that I ha can do something like an NVMe protocol pass-through. That was the idea here. So, so that would be a possibility to have an intermediate device, an inter intermediate driver in the guest, and talking to the full driver here. Basically, more uh, that would be something like a power virtualized driver in this case. And um, would be, but then there's no driver, so and no even interface. How it should be, how one could design things. So mm, yeah, and you might, if you're unlucky, you have to define another NVMe or Fabrics transport, which is also a challenging task, but well, possible at least. So and obviously, the final final solution would be to just use SRV and do a direct pass through. That's <laughs> that's that's only valid if your transport is PCIe. If you have a FC or RDMA or TCP, that doesn't work. Uh, no. Unless you direct attach that transport uh, hardware directly to your QMU, in which case you don't have any problem anyway. You can do that today. Exactly. Hence, it says PCI SRV driver here. Okay, <laughs> you got me there. Yeah. Yes, that works. <laughs> so. And, but, um, but yes, you're correct. Um, obviously, the hardware has to be SRV capable, and um, the resource allocation or the target side will be tricky here. I'm with you there. Yeah. So if you go back to two slides, I think it was, um, 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 when you explained the thing you don't like, uh, which this was um, one, yeah, this one. Maybe. No, this one, you mean. Now the one with the block emulation, I think this it one. was, yes. Yeah. So, um, an ID, my, you, you may want to kill it right yeah. away. So your NVMe of driver on the yeah. host gives you an NVMe device. Yeah. Um, why not expose mm. that device to the, um, to the uh, guest, or at least to QMU itself? Through, uh, you stack another protocol on it and you say it's a PCIe device and you, you have the regular PCIe uh, device emulation. You use the PCIe emulation in, in QMU, meaning that PCIe is only the mean to transporting your commands from your guest to the actual hardware and you don't have to change the commands. Something like this then. So that would be a, a vhost approach. So, so that you do the vhost one, which this then will be an NVMe target presenting as an NVMe vhost target, which then presents an NVMe drive, an NVMe over here. Yes. The problem is that you can't easily do it because the SGL lists are different for some weird reason. Some bright soul had the idea of having two different types of SGL lists for NVMe. And the PCI one is using the first one, which is the PRPs, and the Fabrics one is using the second one, which is the actual SGI, uh, SGL lists. And neither of these formats are mandatory for the other one. So while you could 
the chances are that you are running in some undefined state are pretty high. Which you then would have to do because, uh, but then we are back to rewriting the commands and so. No, no, yes. Not the, commands, the, yeah. <laughs> the commands, yeah. Right. You so were saying. There would be another solution, at least for the RDMA and the TCP side, yeah. because we could do a lib iSCSI like approach, rewrite the whole driver in a user space library. Come on, let's. Ni neither NVMe RDMA nor NVMe Fiber Channel, eh, uh, TCP are big drivers, the, the glue layer. It's pretty easy to write them in user space, just open a TCP socket or an RDMA uh, either. Um, just link it into QEMU, have the QEMU yes, plus device. In principle, in principle, yes, I'm with you. But then I am not quite sure how good the hardware is with address translation. Because that's the actual question I wanted to pose to the audience here, provided there's someone uh, capable of answering that one. Any I.O. I do here, or I format here, out of necessity, will have been formatted in the memory out, uh, layout of the KVM user space process here. So you would need to translate, uh, transform these addresses, or if you pass it on here, the I.O. addresses here will be transformed into QEMO guest kernel addresses, which then have to be transformed into the host kernel addresses. So you have, from my understanding, three types of address translations going on here. So you have one user uh, um, uh, copy from user here, and then the actual address translation from the namespace from the address spaces here into that address space, and then down here. If you format it in here, as you were uh, at, as you were saying, you would still be running in diff a different um, address space. So at one point, you still would have to have to do the address translation. So, and um, I'm not sure if the drivers are able to use the addresses, the user space addresses directly. Or whether you wouldn't have to ha ha you wouldn't have to do a an intermediate, intermediate translation in the in the kernel again to rewrite the addresses, if you know what I'm saying. And so, <laughs> it does work with the with SRV because the SRV one is mm. is actually having an I/O MU here, which translates these two address spaces in hardware. Because both of these address spaces are actually backed by hardware, or rather, Original. this address space is actually bar, um, backed by an IO, uh, IO by an, uh, by an uh, IO MMU. So the IO MMU is able to, trans uh, to transform the addresses from this one to this one. But this is the very specific case for a hardware-backed one. And I'm not sure whether you can sort of separate things so that you have an, the IOMU doing the hardware and translation for you with a not really existing device. So at the moment, it's, it's tied to the PCI device. But the question is, can I have more than one IOMU context per PCI device? Does anyone know? Well, if I want to... If I want to go for the mediated one here, I'm, I will be having, or I might be having, more than one context speaking to the same device. So think about controller virtu virtualization. If I want to have the controller virtualized here, or the NVMe namespace virtualized, I would have more than one namespace talking to the same device. So I will have more contexts, several IOMU contexts, relate to the same hardware here. But this is something which it's just vastly outside my PCI knowledge. No. Yes, it is. Yeah. 
in, in that case, you go through the user space queue emulation, yeah. so yeah. You, you're back to your host virtual address space. You don't need to know your memory for that. Yes, but if I want to do, I want to have a vhost emulation here, then I would need it. Uh, like then you can still use right. the IOM setup for the entire guest because whatever whatever namespace or controller you talk mm -hmm. to. Uh, the I/O sent by the guest are using buffers that come from that guest uh, uh, memory. Yeah. So I don't think it's really strongly necessary. Well, okay, if you want to isolate your devices and mm -hmm. because of one has a crazy DMA engine and it's buggy and DMAing in weird places, okay, that way may be needed. But if it's just for the translation, you may be able to go with just a global one for for your guest. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I would and KVM actually has the 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 virtual the guest physical to uh, host uh, whatever the name mm. mapping yeah. anyway. So I'm pretty sure you can even use that, even okay. if you don't want to use the I/O menu. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Could try. Maybe something workable there. Uh, could could have a look. Yeah. Could try. So because that is then the. What, you already, what um, Damien already said, so that was a very uh, slightly different approach using the vhost one, which um, doesn't necessarily help with the protocol translation, but it does help with the context switches, because you avoid the context switches, which is going into user going into the QMA user space here and back. So you actually um, get rid of two context switches, and the question. Uh, yeah, again, is that um, it's not quite clear to me which is more expensive, the protocol translation or the context switches. So vhost already exists for SCSI. Yeah. Did you have a look there? Any hint? Because in the end, if he's just changing the comment format, well, it'll be that Yeah, hard. so the impression, um, impression I got is that it might be that the context switches are more expensive as the protocol translation. And I mean, this is the whole um, premise of the whole of the vhost stuff, that in the end, you don't really care um, what you d uh, how big the latency is for setting up the program, uh, the IO. What you do care is how many contacts which you incur, because S that will be far so more expensive. Though I would think that uh, uh, the, the main difference with SCSI is that uh, the context switch would be necessary only when you set the doorbells. So it's not a per I.O. thing. It should not be necessary to, to go per I.O. like SCSI. So the penalty would be maximum if you're running your, your device as QDFS1 per queue. But otherwise, you would probably not need the context switch uh, uh, when you when you put the uh, command in the in the submission no, queue, no, if you put it in the submission it's, it's, yeah, it's sure. all about doorbell. Sa yeah. Same for the completions, actually. But then the same holds true for a Cumio emulation. No, no, no. Mm, all right, yeah, yeah. You might be true. Uh, you might be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might. So, yeah. But I'm, again, I'm not quite sure. So the whole thing is. Mm, Definitely worth by having a look here. I'm into the vhost thing, but the problem here is that, as I said, you still would need to do an address on translation to be on the safe side. Otherwise, you can't really be sure that things work as expected. Okay, um, so um, that was actually the end of my slides. Yes, yeah. I, I yeah. expected a slide uh, about RDMA as one Why? possible. <laughs> option. Why? Wouldn't, well, I, I was asking myself um, could, uh, the, the problem of uh, RDMA and VM might have been uh, addressed by somebody already. Not that I know much about it, but you could, you could pr uh, if you have RDMA yeah. you, and you can, uh, if you can do RDMA into the v virtual machine, you could just put the NVMe protocol on top of that RDMA. That's um, well. That would be equivalent to um, well. Mm, hang on, this one here. So, so exactly. So this would be more or less equivalent to that one, to the TCP one. And the problem you have that for RDMA, there is no 
to have no good uh, pass-through available for QEMU. QEMU simply doesn't do RDMA. It doesn't have any clue where. So um, I wouldn't even know how to pass in the RDMA, whatever, queues into the, into the QEMU guest. There is no infrastructure for. Okay. Uh, I'm not quite yeah. familiar with the NVMe driver, yeah. but uh, do, do you know if it has a user space version? No, it doesn't. That was what Johannes said. It would be an idea just to have a user space version of the whole thing, like LibIsgazi did, yeah. and use that one. That would be a possibility here. But then it doesn't exist at this time, so one would have to <laughs> write it. <laughs> well, uh, you might have one. Okay, so uh, as you may know, the NVMe specs are being rewritten as we speak. Yeah, yes. To I'm separate finally uh, protocol yeah. from transport. Yes. So I was just talking with George, and I'm not actually quite sure what the interface is going to be between the two layers, but we may want to look at what they're planning on the specs because that may be the best, uh, uh, best layer where you can actually virtualize something and end up with something perfect. Uh, that doesn't this is something on transport and works for all, all of them. This is something we should be looking at uh, uh, with the NVMe, in the, within the NVMe spec. Uh, talk to Chris. Yeah, I will be. In two weeks' time, I will be doing. Um, so to, to address this, because this I found, str uh, frankly, a bit disappointing. I would have thought that if someone designs a new protocol, it should be relatively easy to virtualize. But then it turns out, no, it isn't. And so, well... Okay, anything else? Any more questions you would have? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, on a light note, you could use Intel Trick and put NVMe over HCI. Ah, yes, I possibly could. Bah. Bah. Yeah, no, no, I don't want to. Yes. I may I add two, two things about, uh, so re regarding this, for yeah. example, possibility yeah. too, you can add, uh, also, uh, RDMA. Uh, How? That's the soft row key. I, I played with that and... The uh, soft row key is not RDMA, but is rather an RDMA driver over network. Yeah, so you, you can put... So, uh, you um, can this, uh, but the soft row key is no difference to that one. That will be the same, the very same layout here. It's just that the NVMe over THCB driver would now be actually two things. Um, namely, you would have the soft row key here, and then the NVMe over RDMA on top of the soft row key one. The remaining thing would be exactly the same, yeah, that's, that's, that's and true. you still would need to have. And the big problem with the soft row key is, where do I talk to? What's on the other side? So How can I pass out the row key frames here to where? So you, exactly. you, you build just uh, the, the soft row soft key network, and uh, through the their net, that's, that's mm, just the normal. Yes, internet. the so biggest problem with that one is that at this time, there are no targets for, uh, for Roki, for uh, NVMe over RDMA with network things. All uh, NVMe over RDMA ones are running on InfiniBand. Slashes. No. Slashes is a target for NVMe Slash, over RDMA. Yes, you could. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't understand. That, that's, that's completely not a problem. So you, you will use just the normal uh, RDMA, uh, the verbs uh, yeah. uh, insi inside NVMe, inside guest. And uh, that will go to the soft rock and uh, through the Ethernet card or just the emulation of the Ethernet card, then uh, you are done. The soft rock is a complete emulation. It doesn't need any hardware, su uh, any hardware support. Yeah, I mean, it's Ethernet. Yeah. yeah, so, but this would be, yeah, so that would be, but then I could as well use NVMe over TCP. Yeah, you will add the, the, the So it's, it's not, conceptually, it's not different. I know, yeah. So, but um, for but this. Uh, so my point is that this is whether I use NVMe over TCP or RDMA and soft rogue here doesn't change the light of this picture. Would be the remaining bits would be just identical, right? No. Right. Okay. Is this, yeah, it would be a network driver, wouldn't it? No. You you will test uh, the part of the NVMe which is responsible for RDMA part, right? Yes, so of course. That, that, that is your goal, right? To test more protocols? No. no. My Why goal not? here is to have a proper emulation or a proper virtualization. Not so much testing of things. I can test the RDMA one far better because 
well, I can use the real hardware to test it. But you, you started with uh, that, uh, why I can't uh, test uh, this protocol, this because? Uh mm, yeah, no, it's not so much for testing. No, it's not quite. But the, um, to put, the, uh, put your things on the head, what I would like to do, uh, wh what I would like to have for RDMA would be a real RDMA interface here in QEMO. That QEMO could leverage verbs directly so that the verbs interface or the Q pairs, the, NV uh, the RDMA Q pairs, could be directed di into the guest itself as Q pairs. No, no, because QEMO doesn't have an interface. QEMO QEMO Q -emo does. Upstream QEMO does. Just not. Does what? <coughs> uh, <actually> QEMO <coughs> has a. Uh, RDMA, it, it has a copy of the VMware parallel virtualized RDMA in that could just attach to normal verbs library. Okay, can you show me how to do that? The, 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 the really? Oh, do show me, yes, please. Yeah, okay. Another crazy idea. Mm -hmm. um, so, not this picture, maybe. Uh, yeah. Anyway, on your host, yeah. whatever your, your yeah. uh, NVMe device ends up uh, yeah. uh, being created from whatever transport, yeah. uh, the namespace has a set of Q pairs. Yeah. Which is memory. Yeah. Can't we direct map that into QMU? You could map them into QEMU but then you wouldn't have an instance doing the address translation for you. Um, absolutely right, yes. But it's my idea for the multiple I.O. menu context. Right. Okay, thank you very much.